Hi, it's Anna Runkle, also known as the Crappy Childhood Fairy. And something that a lot of you have been asking me to cover is how to be in a relationship with another person who has childhood PTSD. And this is such an important question about something that can be really hard, I know, but also totally workable and positive for both people. And I just love those of you who care enough to ask how to be a good partner to people who are affected by hard stuff in their childhood. So first, I just want to acknowledge that the symptoms of childhood PTSD are on a continuum. They come and go, they might be little things, and they could be very serious things. And before I get into the nuts and bolts of how to be with somebody who's having those symptoms, I just want to say that under no circumstances should you put up with abuse, and I'll go into that a little more at the end. So yes, people who had a hard childhood are totally worthy and lovable, and they can be worth a bit of trouble sometimes. And yes, we can be complicated and confusing and needy and exasperating sometimes, but also wise and capable and warm. So here are some tips to help you understand your loved one and offer support while also taking care of yourself, because there is no good relationship without people taking care of themselves. All right, first of all, it may be helpful to know that a lot of what your partner is dealing with is called dysregulation. This is a real and measurable nervous system phenomena that can cause a person to feel spaced out, discombobulated, emotionally overreactive, and struggling to think straight. You're like going, uh-huh, right? <laughs> and I'll put links to other videos and articles of mine below if you wanna learn more about some of those symptoms. Now dysregulation happens to everybody to some degree sometimes, and we all naturally recover from it eventually. And this recovered state is called re-regulation. It's just that for people with childhood PTSD, dysregulation can happen a lot more frequently and be a lot harder to climb back out of. So they're spending a lot less time regulated and a lot more time dysregulated. And it's during those dysregulated times that the problems can really get in there. Now it's important to remember the tendency to get dysregulated isn't your partner's fault and it isn't your fault. Even if your partner thinks it's your fault when she's upset. Everybody does that sometimes, right? Blames the other person, but the symptoms you're seeing are just what PTSD looks like when it's not very well under control. And I mean, technically, how you deal with your partner's dysregulated state could influence how quickly she can get re-regulated. If you just start yelling or threatening to leave, you're not likely to calm things down. So unless you mean it, I'd recommend you not do that, not yelling, not threatening. And you don't have to be a doormat here. It's important for you to remember, even if your partner can't see it in the moment, that it's not your fault her feelings got this intense and you're not responsible for making it all better right now. It's not your fault and it's not your job. It's our job. We, people with PTSD, have to learn to re-regulate. Nobody can regulate our PTSD brains for us. We're the ones who've got to take the steps to change it. And we're the ones who have the option of self-control, as hard as it may be to draw upon when we're feeling the urge to lash out or run away from our loved ones. It's not our fault, but the change happens through us, if that makes sense. Okay, that said, Here's what you can do. You can support your partner as they try to heal. You can ask or suggest that they try to heal or suggest that they read a certain book or try a certain technique, but you can't make it happen. Not, you can't do it on your timeline. You can't do it against the other person's will and you can't do it for them. If only, right? I wish somebody could do it for me. What you can do is be understanding, be encouraging, be willing to step back and detach a little when things feel crazy. And by that I mean have boundaries. Now you might notice that when your partner's dysregulated, they can go from happy to goofy to overwhelmed to enraged and then to this emotional flatness like nothing ever happened, all without you ever realizing what set this off. And I know how hard that is and sometimes They'll be dysregulated without any outward signs. They, they seem fine, but then you notice that they're not really hearing a word you say, or they're tripping over things, or they're forgetting to show up for appointments. Now, with some people, this brain fog aspect of dysregulation can be really pervasive, and it'll be tempting for you to think that they're acting this way intentionally to show you that you're not important to them or that they don't respect you. And while all of this could in theory be the case in some cases, it's most likely just a sign that they're dysregulated. 
And believe me, I'm telling people like your partner that dysregulation is not an excuse to be rude or inconsiderate. Healing while you're in a couple means two people kind of meeting halfway. Your partner may need to make the effort to show you that she cares, and you need to keep in mind that a brain thing might be temporarily blocking the signs of caring that you wish you could see. So you meet halfway. So that's one thing. But maybe the hardest thing about a person with childhood PTSD is that they can be so unreasonable. They get upset and you get blamed for things that you have nothing to do with. And I'll tell you a secret. If you keep presenting yourself as someone who has the power to fix the PTSD, you will soon be having fights about why you haven't fixed it yet. And I'm gonna bet that you've had that argument before, maybe many times, where your partner believes that you have the key to her feeling better. If only you would turn the key. That's a way of thinking that I call outsourcing responsibility for healing. And I tell people who have childhood PTSD to step out of that thinking and own the process. And I'm telling you, as their partner, let them own it. Just let them do it. It's totally okay and appropriate to offer comfort to a person who's in that kind of freaked out response. And consistent love and stability are good things you can offer. And definitely these influence healing. But sometimes what love looks like is you support a person and give them space to just day by day notice how their PTSD affects them and recalibrate themselves and their dysregulation response. Maybe they're already in my courses for doing this, and maybe they're at the beginning of the learning curve. But either way, you can support your partner while she does whatever she's doing and still hold a boundary against yucky behavior that happens when she's dysregulated. So the way to do that is when you notice the symptoms coming on in your partner and they're starting to behave in ways that are making you feel scared or upset, you can take a step back. Remember that your feelings matter too. They matter a lot. But your partner who's having CPTSD symptoms right now, this is not a good time to try to talk things out with them, to tell them your feelings or try to work anything out. You'll get much better results if you wait. And if they're pressing you to talk about their feelings or your feelings, you can say, mm, things are feeling a little intense right now and I wanna talk to you, but I wanna wait until things are calmer. Now notice you're not abandoning them or shutting them down. You're making a plan to communicate in a better way. And if your partner doesn't wanna let you do that, you get to do it anyway. Remember, they're not themselves right now, so it's okay for you to do the wise thing for yourself. And eventually, they will feel calmer and you can talk then. So what's helped me in my marriage, since I'm the one who gets dysregulated, is that I try to take responsibility to notice when I'm dysregulated and not say much until I can get myself re-regulated. And this is sometimes easier said than done, and the urge to like process the feelings sometimes is overpowering. And it seldom works, but whether I step back or try to talk in the moment, I try to remember that I'm responsible for calming down and I'm responsible for being kind and respectful while I do that. It's not cool to blame other people for my problems. That kind of thinking would only keep me stuck. And I don't have license to take my frustrations out on other people just because I had bad things happen to me when I was little. So here's a summary of things you can do when your partner is experiencing symptoms. First, you can notice the dysregulation. Sometimes, even if you don't say anything, just noting to yourself, mm-hmm, he's dysregulated again. This can help you stay neutral and even supportive without getting sucked into any drama. Second, you can try to reduce overwhelm for your partner by slowing down, keeping your voice gentle, and not asking a lot of questions or making demands. And again, you don't have to mention that you're doing this. You can just do it and just see if it helps. Third, you can mention what you're noticing and ask what they need. You can say, hey, I notice this is making you a bit overwhelmed. Is there anything you need to make this easier? Or you could say, would it help if I gave you a hug right now? And I say this because like a, a squeezing hug can actually be really helpful for re-regulating, but not when it makes a person feel claustrophobic or um, you know, just they don't wanna be touched. So you have to ask first. If things start getting tense, it can really help to get just a little space or a tiny bit of separation. And the trick is to do this without setting off an abandonment trigger. So let's say you're on the phone and you can hear your partner is getting wound up and you know that it's about to turn into an argument. You can ask for five minutes apart 
and you can make a concrete plan for when the conversation will start again. And just five minutes can help discharge all the dysregulation that was bu bubbling up. And if your partner uses my daily practice technique of writing and meditating, you can very politely suggest that she might wanna do that. Or you can do it, invite her to do it with you. Everybody can do it, it's for everybody. But since any kind of comment about dysregulation can, to a dysregulated person, feel like criticism, sometimes the kindest thing is to tell a white lie and just pretend you have to go to the bathroom. Just get a few minutes apart. Whatever you do, don't resort to giving the silent treatment or storming out or threatening the relationship. Even if you knew you were actually going to leave, which you probably aren't, but even if you knew and that was your plan, announcing it to a dysregulated person is only going to lead to a blow up. So my advice is stay polite, stay kind, stay out of the drama, and it will pass. Your partner might complain and try to get the conversation started again, but believe me, she will thank you later when her brain and emotions are re-regulated, that you stayed calm and sturdy and didn't let things turn into a big fight. Everyone's exhausted after a fight, and arguing can cost a person with childhood PTSD days of dysregulation where they're only quasi-functioning. So calm is good, steadiness is good. Now I mentioned at the beginning that there is no scenario where you're obliged to put up with abuse, either emotional or physical. I don't care if you're a man or a woman, I don't care who started the argument, you don't deserve abuse. And if it happens, the right thing to do is to get out with kids if there are kids and get to safety. Anything that needs to be worked out can be worked out when things are calmer. That would be the time to pursue professional help for them. But for you, if your partner can't or won't control abusive behavior, then it's sad, but it's not best for you or your kids to be trapped with that. Okay, but all that said, if you are blessed enough to have a safe, loving, and supportive relationship, that is just one of the most wonderful healing things that could happen for anyone and is a great gift for a person who had trauma as a kid. Not everybody is called to that kind of relationship and some people are not healed enough yet to pull it off right now, but a good relationship is worth really putting your heart into. It's a good reason to work hard on yourself as a person. So thank you to all the partners out there who do that and make the world a more loving place because of it.